you're going to have two choices here, everybody. You're going to either wake up and rise up and do your work and get become a better version of yourself, or you're going to numb out, hide, and get hooked into old patterns and behavior. It's, it's a not, really good point. It's mm-hmm. not bad. And it's, it's been difficult. Yeah, it's you know? really hard. Yeah. I think that's another thing that was really interesting for me to just name that. I, I think of somebody that's like constantly like, well, okay, how can I look at this experience and find the, the good in it and learn and grow from it? And at one point, I think my therapist, she just said, hey, listen, surviving is enough. Big show today, guys. Happy to be with you. Gabrielle Bernstein, a role model for a new generation of spiritual seekers. You and I have this spiritual connection in that we we haven't spent a lot of time together, but but we we know obviously you know that I am a, a self proclaimed spirit junkie, and I know that about you yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. And so, what as it relates to your spiritual practice, and and what does that mean to you? Um, I think it's for me. I just uh, have always connected with a presence um I've always felt someone once said to me that try as hard as I can I will never be able to break that inherent sort of natural uh connection I have to spirit or the universe or higher self, whatever people want to call it. It's, it's just something as a little kid. And I didn't grow up in a religious family or spiritual family at all. I was, I'm definitely an outlier. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, I just always had that connection and I naturally look to that connection in almost all ways in my life. It helps me. I've always manifested pretty quickly, fast, Mm -hmm. um, in alignment with the highest good, you know, I've always sort of thought that way. Um, I find it to be one of the greatest relationships in my life and always has been. Um, I constantly feel I have the the intention to always sort of stay, or if I get out of it, find a flow. My flow is what I call it. I know when I'm swimming upstream, I know when things are a little like, okay, you're trying to like, you know, make things work that aren't in the flow. I have a, to me, spirit junkie is having an insane amount of trust in a a, um, presence in a flow to your life. And that trust just sort of guides me. And so I I surrender to that a lot. Well said. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's beautiful to hear someone speaking about their, I always call it like a faith statement when we, yeah, right. in one of my books, I, I tell people, I teach people how to write a faith statement. But when I hear people okay. like what I just experienced with what you just said, share their faith statement with so much conviction. It's, yeah. It's like, I didn't even have to hear the words. The words were excellent, but like, I didn't have to hear the words. <laughs> I can feel your, your faith. I can feel that mm-hmm. conviction and that inner knowing it's not just words mm-hmm. it's not just trendy it's not just it's like you, there's this this no. ch- grounded sense of knowing that you are indeed being guided that there is a mm-hmm. spiritual inspiring force within you uh and yeah i feel that thank you that was beautiful oh yeah i feel that from you i feel that constantly every time i've like seen you speak or even just everything i see about you in social media and your books and all stuff. I was like, Oh, we, we get this like this. Mm -hmm. And I have, I always say to people, I was like, I, because I have that trust and that ability to surrender. I also have a lot of really wild experiences Mm -hmm. and, you know, signs and things that would reaffirm this belief I have and this trust that I have. Um, But over the past course, a couple years and really this past year, I don't know if you've experienced this in your life. Uh, Sometimes with spirituality and these faith statements and it's all wonderful, but it's about grounding it into this existence, like our bodies, grounding into our bodies. And so I spent so much of my life uh, very comfortable up in, you know, Mm. the higher energies or whatever you want to call it. I can be very spacey and kind of connected, but it's been hugely important to me to ground that because COVID showed that to me. You know, I can't tell you how many times I saw people that speak the same we do, the same way we do, but not grounded in yeah. reality of what 
we're all experiencing and the mm. interconnectedness of what we're all experiencing. So funny. It was like, yeah. none of this matters if it's not grounded. Oh, completely. Yeah. I think that, I think that when you, I think one of the things that COVID gave me as well was this, this really clear cut bullshit meter. Yes. To same. Be like, mm. and not with, yep. not with judgment because look, I'm the girl who wrote the book judgment detox. So I yep. try my judgments, usually the first response. And then the second response yeah. is, okay, what's triggered in me about that? Yeah. But yes, but yes, I, I do get, I do get, uh, one thing that's been very triggering to me is that I've witnessed throughout this experience of living through COVID and living through this this major BLM movement, which was beautiful and and totally. shattering, and hopefully can continue to be. But in the midst of all of it, was this heightened level of judgment and attack and yes. separation. Yes, that yes, there's so much and so has much, been so, so much, much of that. that. And I was actually talking about this on I think it was on somebody else's podcast the other day, but about how like it's almost like cancel culture is a joke now because people have just taken yeah. it to this extreme level. And so mm -hmm. when you see mm -hmm. someone who's like a self-proclaimed spiritual person attacking in these right. aggressive ways, the first thought is judgment. The first thought is like, are you, mm -hmm. you're, you, you, what? But then the second mm -hmm. thought really started to come in for me of this like deep sadness and compassion for mm -hmm. these individuals who were in this need to project and yeah. this, um, and and I can only imagine how much suffering there must be for someone to yes. be on that attack. And and the you know, I think I even spoke with you about this at one point. The um, when I woke to, because I had the same thing with the judgment. It was like I was feeling judged, judged, and I was also feeling judgment for more so than I would say prior to twenty twenty. Like it was a real thing mm -hmm. where I was like, oh people are dying you know what I mean yes, how are you not yes, wearing a yes, mask like yes. I just couldn't like I was like unapologetic about it mm -hmm. I was yeah I was mind blown. and these are this is not just people that you know want to fight the system on everything I mean this is there was a period of time where people I knew really honestly didn't believe mask worked and it was I was like oh Jenna this is a real big moment for you <laughs> like you feel judgy but you have to give people, it doesn't mean you have to agree and mm. continue a relationship, but you definitely have to give people the space to be where they're at, you know? Totally. And totally. You it was really, that. it was really challenging because yeah. this is not just like, oh, I like apples and you like oranges. It's like the, the apples are affecting the oranges. Like we're killing people, yeah. you know, this is yeah. really dangerous. So yeah. it was, a, it was a very hard um, lesson in a lot of ways for me I think you just figure. nailed it though because it's like the first response is like are you are you effing kidding me but yeah but if you are if you are that you can't resist someone's resistance so yes and also being in that place of judgment it, it ain't gonna work so and it doesn't do anything yeah you don't do go anything. anywhere right do anything. so I, I think you're absolutely absolutely right which is one let people be where they're at but that doesn't mean you have to stick around yep. yes. it doesn't mean yes. you have to stick. i mean a lot of my friendships have changed uh, yeah same. i've you know I, I i really do feel that some of my sisterhood that i've met through social media and like literally our our random mom talks on dm yeah have been the catalyst for some new friendships for me you know like yeah someone who i love dearly and maybe you're friends with her um jen meyer she and i just got really oh close. jen yeah. and i are great friends and by the way she was so funny because she was texting me about your manifestation challenge i was like girl i'm already signed up <laughs> she and is I literally <laughs> my publicist when it comes to the manifesting challenge um <laughs> But I think Jen, my friendship with Jen is such a good example. It's like Jen and I have yes. literally been in the same place two times in our life over lunch or whatever and, and a dinner. But we have yeah. but we have a sisterhood because we just let we let our, our phones do the work and let our FaceTimes do the work. Yes. And just she's amazing. She's also just a really heart open. She's amazing. Heart -warming yeah. Human and, and she is so in a I, I mean, I hear you talk about like the spirit junkie, like the mm -hmm. grounded sisterhood. I mean, that is. I hear you. I have the same thing. I mean, I have so many friendships evolved. I would say they, you know, it's not like they went away. It was 
it was just about um, best boundaries. And you also learn something. The boundaries. Like in times of crisis, you can see who people really are and what their priorities mm -hmm. are. And, and mm -hmm. it's not to judge. It's just if someone's priorities are different than yours when it comes to life or death situations, that's going to change the mm -hmm. relationship. That's going to change the relationship. Yeah. It's going to change your relationship and yeah. it's going to change how you interact with that person totally. and, and, you know, all of that. It doesn't, what it doesn't change, and this is what I say to people is like, what it doesn't change is the love that I feel totally, you know, so many of my friends that we had different views on politics and you know, COVID and all of the 2020 of it all. I, I many times check in with my heart and myself and I was like, Oh no, I still really love these people deeply. Mm -hmm. And there's a real strong sense of love there. There's a boundary right now because it, it was just bringing me down and there was, you know, the conspirituality podcast really helped me to talk mm -hmm. about things online mm -hmm. and people online. I mean, finding that was really helpful mm -hmm. because so many that conspiratorial thinking was very present with a lot of friendships of mine. Very present I, in the wellness I, I just, and spiritual self-help space, big time. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. It was yeah. like, you know, there's a, there, you find the universe sort of brings you people and guides along the way to, mm -hmm to help you through certain times. And I found that happening a lot. And you being one of them. I think what you're saying is boundaries and it's game changing to just be in a place where you can say, I don't really agree with that. Yeah. I'm going to uh, yeah. rethink my connection, but I can still love you. Really I can still love you. Powerful. I can still feel my heart space for you. You know, I honor where you're at. I, I don't agree. Yeah. But that's okay. Yeah. You know, and, mm -hmm. and it was a very, I think it was hard for me to like wake up to that. I, I think I was clinging on like, and and then it creates a spin in my own head of like, oh, wow, am I missing something? Yeah. You know, do they know something I don't know is, right. you know, all this. And then it just ultimately comes down to that. It's like, oh, no, no. Okay. We're just wholly in a different place. Yeah. And it's, it's never been, I mean, times have never been more divisive than now. I didn't think it could get more divisive than 2016. And then it's just like skyrocketed. Can you even, I know, I know. I said the same thing. I was like, <sighs> Lord, if no, you know, as intuitive and empathic. And I think I am, I didn't see one bit of this year. That year oh coming. God, no. But I think there's something really precious about what has occurred because in order for, true healing to occur the underbelly has to be brought to the surface it's it's right. it's like the 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 yeah. you know what has to hit the fan i don't even know why i'm pretending not to curse i've been cursing this entire time but the shit right. has to hit the fan <laughs> in order for for people to really wake up uh, yeah. in a yeah. in a in a different way so there has been and i said this from the beginning of covid i said you're going to have two choices here, everybody. You're going to mm -hmm. either wake up and rise up and do mm -hmm. your work and get become a better version of yourself, or you're going to mm -hmm. numb out, hide, and get hooked into old patterns and behaviors mm -hmm. just to try to put, you know, it's a, it's a really safe. good point. It's, it's not, a really good point. Mm -hmm. It's not bad. And it's been difficult. Way. Yeah, it's been really know? hard. Yeah. It's been difficult. And I think that's another thing that was really interesting for me to just name that. I, I think of somebody that's like constantly like, well, okay, how can I look at this experience and find the, the good in it and learn and grow from it? And at one point, I think my therapist, she just said, hey, listen, surviving is enough. That's exactly right. Like, right. That's exactly, this is, this is, I mean, I kept saying like, this is like wartime. And yeah. <laughs> when I would, when I would Dear Gabby people, even today I did an episode, I recorded an episode of this Dear Gabby show where I Dear Gabby people. And one person came on, she was saying how she felt so unsafe about leaving the house and she was scared to get into a car service. And, oh, wow. and I just mm -hmm. sat with her and I said, that's totally normal. That's natural. That's where we're at. It's, mm -hmm. it's don't resist it allow it be yeah. present with the feelings of discomfort be present with the feelings of not being safe because we we want like our our our, our forward thinking productive mindset wants to just be like oh well i, I gotta move past this 
it's actually no we've mm-hmm. lived through a trauma and the only way to undo mm-hmm. a trauma is to be in the full embodiment of the of the discharge of it so we can't if we just try yes. to pretend it didn't happen and move past move past we're gonna we're gonna have panic attacks so exactly and if you're constantly you know po- positive poly and you know finding you you sort of end up you spend so much, I mean, I, I personally think this year, whether we know it or not, has put a lot of our brains into this survival Definitely. fight or flight mm-hmm. moment. So even if we're like, oh, we're safe, we're okay, everything's okay, everything's fine, I'm enjoying, you know, Netflix and pizza and like, whatever, you're in this fight or flight. So the more you just say, everything's okay, everything's okay, like, there's going to be moments, and I know I've had it more than ever, where I was like, all right, okay, Whew, this is a lot, you know, and let me just acknowledge that and let me have a big cry and let me just feel this and the isolation and the this and that. And like, it's a lot. And then if you accept that and like when someone said that to me, I was like, Oh, it's okay to feel bad right now. Like it's okay. And of course we're going to be a little fearful. (laughs) Like I'm contemplating having to get on a plane and go work on a set. And it's Mm -hmm. like, Mm -hmm. okay Mm -hmm. you know all right you know I feel protected and I'm going to do all the cautions and measures and this and that but you know we've been we have whether we like it or not been in a state of survival for a year so and even when the the herd immunity sets in and most of us are vaccinated what we're going to still witness is just PTSD it's going to be like yes don't touch that you know like oh my god yeah yeah Yeah. can I can I hug you there's gonna have to be another level of of spiritual and energetic support for people as we move out of it as well because there's um there's there's this 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 like you said it's actually this almost biological hypervigilance that we're gonna have to just start to have to really work with yeah and yeah. Uh, get back into the body and you know it's interesting yes. because as a dancer I wonder you you you're very embodied but do you think thank that, you do you think that that is something that you live with in your day-to-day life as well I <laughs> I think dance is a quickest way for me to become embodied yes um I think it saved me growing up I mean I had I had some like, you know, I had abandonment. My dad left my mom when I was young and she had a not great second relationship. A lot of things that would for most kids create, you know, there's trauma. Um, Dance kept me embodied. And I do believe that sometimes with trauma, people do one of two things. They either eject out or they, you know, go deep into like internal struggle. And they're so... I was definitely an eject outer, you know, I was like back to the spirit realms, you know, where like, I know where I'm comfortable. So I dance was like, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so the way in which I embody as a dancer and when I'm performing and I would always say it was my first experience with any kind of channeling because I remember the feeling coming over my eyes and I remember the the difference I would feel on stage versus my walking life. Mm -hmm. Now, at my place I'm at now, it's about embodying in all areas of my life with or without dance. You know, it, it's really about grounding and in so many ways. So, um, and because I, I just haven't, dance used to be my, you know, daily, everyday job. Now it's not so much in the right. same way. So I try, I, I just do so much because it's really not, easy for me to stay grounded, like stay in my body, right. even though my attachment to my embodiment is one of my strongest uh, sensory gifts. And, and just, um, you know, I, I feel very physical. I've always been very sensual. I, you know, I feel in my body, I'm comfortable, but I've, it's easy for me to get ungrounded very quick. Right. So I have and to do a have, lot of work. And you have this anchor that you can return to yeah, it's yeah. Really fascinating what you were just saying. So you have this attachment breach with your father and then this other relationship that you witnessed your mother. So you definitely as a child experienced trauma and then yeah. you're dancing. So what's so beautiful is that you were without even realizing it, healing the and processing mm-hmm. the trauma because one of yes. the most important things that one can do to process trauma is the physicality, is the somatic experience. Because right. when we get traumatized, we become disembodied. I can speak to that. And right. I, I have experienced childhood trauma and I cut off from my body. And 
and was almost like this, just like my body was like lugged around with me for wow. years, right? So it's it's so fascinating that without even realizing it, the dance was was yes. was healing you in real time to mm -hmm. ultimately save you from other crap that you might have otherwise had to deal with. I say it all the time. You know, it's funny. I never really knew that. I never had that understanding. No one ever put it as eloquently as you just put it, but it's so true. And I started at five. So I was continuing and I moved to you know, my mother. We moved every three years when I was a kid. So it was, you work, I would, you know, even your life's ungrounded, you know, it's like mm -hmm. you make friends and then you're gone. And, mm -hmm. But dance was a continual thing. So I would move studios and, and I was being, luckily, um, it was a natural talent and gift that I was being recognized for. So I had um, the grounding embodiment healing of trauma at the same time as gaining confidence because it was being shown to me like, oh, you, you know, she's pretty good at this. Like there's real talent here. So who knows where I would be without have having that my entire life. And I, I, it's like, so I say this to kids all the time. It's like finding anything you're passionate about, um, especially something that can be physically in the body, because totally. I always felt a sense of connection and confidence with my body and the self-esteem of that. And it helped because I knew how to be embodied. You yeah. know, I knew what it was like to move and be sexy and feel good and feel powered. I used to feel so powerful, yeah. you know, as a dancer. Girl, that is, that is something that I did not experience. And it was only when I was in yeah. my late thirties that I was starting to really heal from the remembrance of sex, childhood sexual abuse. I, I yeah. remembered it. And I was only then oh. like, oh, wow, this is why you've been so disembodied. This is why you've carried so much shame. This is yeah. why. And so one of the practices I did to heal in my recovery journey was S-Factor. Oh, yes, the pole dancing, yes. right? Yes. And so, you know, the first thing we'll say, like, oh, it's pole dancing. It's actually truly this trauma. So it's hard. Like, it's, it's like, it's, it's physically hard, yes. Um, but it's really the core of that work is to help a woman find her as as Sheila would say her exotic creature but really yeah. return to her body and I had these I did it in private sessions because for me it was therapy it was like another form of yes. therapy and I worked with uh, this incredible ass teacher Erin um, in New York City and I hope you're enjoying this show. And if you want to get more Gabby, you can click the link below, subscribe to my Dear Gabby podcast on Apple, be the first to know when the episodes drop because they come out one week before the video. And you can download it to your phone, listen to it while you're driving, while you're cooking, while you're working out. You can just get more Gabby wherever you are. And if you feel called, leave a review. I'd love to hear from you. Now let's get back to this episode. It was tears and it was... It was, and every week she'd say, oh. can you, you know, can you take off another piece of clothing? Like almost like stripping me down week after yeah. week, right? Like, can we get into the thong now? You know, and not from any other reason than just becoming, it was almost like she was stripping away the shame with every layer. Of yeah. Clothing. Oh, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, and did you feel by the end of it, the growth of, Definitely. Did it in impact your entire life? It impacted my whole life. I uh, really want to return to class yeah. because it, the thing about S Factor that's tough is it's not as easy to do. Like, in mm -hmm. yes, I sometimes will go into my gym and shut the door, listen to my, I have an S Factor um, playlist. We can put it in the show notes if anybody wants to get some. Oh um, please give it to me. So I will definitely, definitely give it to you. Um, a lot of like Rihanna and just like, just really like, like, yeah. re, you know, just, just sort of like emo heart string yeah. kind of music. And sometimes I'll just shut the door, lock it, and then just like physically riff. But, but not like what I watch, you know, I watch you and just like all of a sudden you're just like, I'm working out and now I'm just like in my exotic creature. Like that's, that's right. not an easy place for me to go. Yeah. And so consistent S work in, in an actual classroom would be very beneficial for me and God willing, yeah. I'm sure that they're doing privates now, I, I, even during COVID, but um, at some point when I'm back in the city more consistently, I'm going to make that part of my 
commitment as if it were a therapy mm-hmm. because it mm-hmm. is therapy. it is it therapy, is therapy. Mm-hmm. I mean it's 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 a somatic experiencing kind of therapy and mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. and it's required for me so I, I, even this conversation I'm so grateful to, because it's just giving me this gentle reminder that I got to get back and yeah uh, you know I, oh you and you're reminding me mm-hmm. <laughs> same mm-hmm. thing I'm like oh mm-hmm. wow no I how important that is that that part of us to be ignited and to feel it's it's so essential it's the divine feminine it's that Mm -hmm. powerful goddess within us that you know it's body empowerment embodiment you know i i'm with you on that maybe that's a silver lining in tiktok is that like yes girls are dancing (laughs) i just i just said this it was as if like i got the message i was like okay 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 it was like right now like do anything you can go do a tiktok a day like i mean take 30 minutes and learn the dance and do a TikTok. And every time I do it, I have so much fun. Yeah. I do feel better. Yeah. It shakes up the like quarantine, you know, yeah. you get into yeah. this thing and it is necessary. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We can't be in a class, you know? Yeah. And for me, I find myself the physical exercise that I've been doing a lot more lately is actually Pilates based, yoga based, just flow based that may not mm-hmm. be dance, but I put on that emo soundtrack and I just am like, let me. Yep. Work. And that is sort of like the oh God, longing I so breast get factor. <laughs> it's the longing breast factor. But, and I want to really acknowledge like any woman who has experienced sexual trauma in any form, yeah. whether it's S factor or another type of dance, it's when it, it will be one of the most uh, uh, empowering and healing practices to uh, mm-hmm. return to your body, to face shame, to to physically process and move shame through you. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Cause I'm also, that's pretty amazing seen by another person. Like Aaron, my teacher who would hold me in that class was a Sherpa. She was like a midwife yeah. for my recovery because wow. she was, she was holding me in my shame of being seen so, in that way. Oh, God, what job. an incredible guide for you. Big job. Yeah, and she's an wow. amazing person. Yeah, I love that. That's amazing. I mean, it makes me really think because, you know, I think it's so powerful for women, period, whether you have experienced sexual abuse or not, or you have, you know, confidence, whatever it is, that type of therapeutic work of dancing really honestly and anything that gives you feeling sensual powerful at the same time is so healing I mean I I honestly like I know without a doubt it saved me in my life and I know that I know what how rare it is too you know I, I'm of I have a whole slew of other issues but for because I was a dancer my entire life and and you know I have videos of myself it's a very funny joke in my my family but my videos of me at eight nine you know I have no idea what I'm doing is like consider you know I'm in fishnets and right 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 right, you know, right. I am I am doing this right <laughs> like right. I am I am there and I'm eight nine I have no idea it's anything like that but what I do know is I feel really free and confident and good in my body you know you know one of my best friends is like this she's actually a sex coach she does um i'll have to have Mm -hmm. her on the show she's amazing her name is dana b myers and she does like sexual like sex coaching for moms really like helping moms get their mojo back and she has a pole in her house and she's like one of the most embodied humans i know and she's like very vocal about her like you know, bringing her dildos on vacation with her girlfriends and like, right. you know, having sex right. with her husband, telling us all the stories. And, and she has a pole in her house and she sent me this video the other day of her, I think her daughter's like seven, maybe six, seven a year old, uh-huh. seven, like epic on the pole, like no joke, Amazing. flipping her hair, like <laughs> full on embodiment, right? Oh, on this pole. my Like amazing. doing like, you know, little kids, they, they can, you know, flip themselves upside down, whatever, just tricking out on the pole. And I, you know, for, at first you're like, holy shit, there are kids on the pole, you know, but then, but then there was this moment of like, good they don't on know. you, mm-hmm. like good for you, mom. You are, you are yes. giving her the gift of her female power. Yes. And let me tell you how huge that is yep. for that little girl. Yep. And my mom, I have to give her so much credit. She, you know, when I was younger and I was in dance and I was doing these 
competitions and these dances that, you know, we are, we're in fishnets and we're, you know, it was like popular at the time in Baltimore turn around, just like shake your butt. You know, that was a dance move. I mean, we did like things that were with our head. My mom never, ever shamed me. Like not once. Yeah. She never was like, well, don't do that in front of that person. Right, or right. well, Jenna, that's a little bit much like, if, or about my body of anything. She was like, yeah, girl, I loved it. That was awesome. Mm-hmm. She would be like, show your body. Honestly, Jen, like you look amazing. It was so, um, the opposite of which I think a lot of women want as mothers will do because we think like, like oh, that's offensive, you know, or I don't mm-hmm. want my daughter. What will people think if she's twirling on a pole at seven, but right. she only knows your reaction to that. You know, she's right. feeling we're all naturally sensual, you right. know? And to, and, and for you as a woman to not have that shut down is such a gift and a blessing. Yeah. And, Today, you are an embodiment of that in the physical form. And so I just want to encourage you to share more like of the behind the scenes kind of uh, Jenna yeah. in your gym, just because I've like, I remember one video you did in front of the gym, like mirror, just like totally native, just dancing, dancing. And I just watched it like over and over because it's, it's actually really <laughs> inspiring. It's really inspiring. It's really empowering. Oh, I think it's the one where I was trying. That was the day, Gabby. That was the day where I was like, all right. I feel so disconnected from you who I am yeah. during this yeah. quarantine. Yes. And I was like, I'm just going to take a dance. So, you know, my friend did a heels class. I was like, I'm going to take this class. Of course, Callum wakes up from nap. So I'm like holding him for half the time. But I was like, you know what? And guess what? I was so good for like a week after that. I mm-hmm. felt like mm-hmm. just really, but I was like, okay, cool. Like I feel back on my body and, you know, moms, we have this, this, and this, and this of our priorities. But like, for me, anything that brings me in my body is yeah. like so necessary. Yeah. You know, it's and, funny, they say yeah. the 12 steps, like anything you put before your program, you will lose. And it's like, yeah, anything you put before your dance, you know, isn't it, yeah. it's just gonna, it's not going to be as it's not going to thrive. Our, it's our, you know, as my therapist said to me, she was like, this is how you self care for yourself. Yes. You know, this is how you are able to care for yourself. It's yeah. not all salt baths and meditations. Like mm-hmm. it's also you getting in your body and feeling sensual and sexy and dancing and, you know, doing what is right for you, what feels good for you, what you know. You, like we all have to find that during this time. So I think our I think our call to action for everybody today is Yeah, your right. Your body. Are we doing a TikTok after this? And now I'm like, shoot, I'm I gonna mean, go on and find it. So <laughs> funny, the second that you said that my heart was like, ah, no <laughs> because there's that's like that there's this story of like I don't want to be seen that way. I, it's more for me uh, to work through. I get it. I get yeah. it's hard. I imagine it must be hard to not have that be a part of your development in your life and then go back and try and fuel it and find it. You know, I imagine mm-hmm. that that must be like, that mm-hmm. must take a good amount of effort. You know, it's like asking me to go sing and, you know, right. I don't know how to do that. It's right. Like, yeah, no, it's funny. It's I think that I've, I've been on stage for 15 years as a speaker. Well, 20 years as a motivational speaker. And yeah, and you're so incredible at it. It is when I'm most embodied. And at the, and the more embodied I've become through the S factor and through the therapy, I the 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 more at ease I am in my body on stage. Oh, that's but, so interesting. But it's there's still there's still more. Yeah. Um, but that's great. There's more to work on. I mean, that's, I'm I'm always like game for what's next. So yes. But what I'm literally and we can change. Do, you know, we, we can we, change. You know, that's can change, so amazing. Yes. And my next, so my commitment to you right now, and this is what I hope everybody can, when they s- stop listening to this today, <laughs> will go and do or do it while you're listening is uh, go get, go, you can go listen to my uh, S Factor playlist. Yes. I'm going to get down on my mat and I'm going to move a little bit and I'll send you a little, little DM of me and my mat. And please, I'll do it too. You too. And that's my call to action for everyone today is just move and, um, and let, and ladies, give yourself even like a molecule of sensuality and that will be, yes, that's enough. Yes. Move, move, move in whatever way you can. It, there's, there's, it's good for all things. So I say all so things. Beautiful. But the thing I will leave you with, and this will be your inspiration for TikTok, is that seeing a confident woman in the embodiment of her sexuality in such a confident, clean, uninterrupted way is healing for other women who, oh. who have that disembodiment. 
So I want you to feel me when I say this to you. When you go on your TikTok, it's no longer going to be like, oh, let me just have some fun or let me do this for my social media. I want you to do it for the girls out there who need to see an empowered woman in her body. Oh, okay. Oh, Gabby. Mm. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Thank you. And I fully get what you're saying. And Mm -hmm. I will do that for you and for everyone, honestly, and for myself. Truly. Yeah. Yeah. Baby, I love you. I'm so glad that we so, we're so happy we did chat this. on. I can't wait for a slumber party in LA. I will done. Be making that happen. And done, um, done, done. And you know, I'm on I'm I'm on DM speed dial for you. <laughs> I mean, same. We will get through this. Yeah, we will get close. through this together. We're close. We're close. <laughs> Amazing. You. Well, I loved this. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I think you're amazing. I'm so glad we've connected. If you like this video and you want to get more Gabby, check out the next one right over here.